explain what some of the limits and problems are, Doc? Yeah, Kim and Devin, you know, so first off, let's define testing. Right now, we are talking about swab testing of the back of the nose to find virus particles that are being shed by someone with an active infection. Now, I've discussed blood testing for antibodies, which looks for prior infection before it is not ready for widespread use, but swab testing also has challenges. Swabbing the back of the nose to collect a sample sounds simple enough, but the first thing you need is a swab. For the test to work, the swabs have to be specially made. They cannot contain cotton, wood, or any organic components. And the problem is, there's a shortage of these fancy Q-tips. The supply has not met the demand, which has already left many communities scrambling. For the test to be valid, a good sample needs to be collected, and the lab or machine it's processed in also needs to be accurate. Now, an issue many people have identified is that the swab tests can only tell if a person is shedding virus at the time it's done. For example, if a swab is done after a person is exposed, but before the infection has developed, basically during the incubation window, the test may be negative, but the person will go on to develop an infection. Now, this doesn't mean testing is pointless, though. Knowing who might be an asymptomatic or presymptomatic spreader is critical, and certainly knowing if someone is positive is essential, but it's just as important to understand the limitations of the test. It's only sampling a single point in time, which is also why, even with widespread testing, the use of masks, hand washing, and social distancing will not go away. Yeah, and relative to the issue of swab shortages, there are ongoing research studies, including at my own hospital, Henry Ford, to evaluate how well a saliva sample might be a substitute. Prior research has found, though, that the most accurate results are from samples that are taken deep behind the nose, but as tests become more sensitive, other samples might actually prove to be adequate. Yeah, well, Dr. McGeorge, what about the effectiveness of other back-to-work screenings, like the temperature checks and the questions that they ask about your symptoms? Well, you know, that's just it. No single item is perfect. People can have COVID-19 without a fever or have it with minimum symptoms only. But hopefully, between virus testing and the employer screening questions before work, we can catch as many cases as possible and then add the extra layer of masks, hygiene, and distancing to really decrease possible transmission even further. That's the key to going back to work. Yeah, indeed. Okay. Thanks, Doc.